nervous. Hey everyone, welcome to another craft kit testing video here on my channel. If you are new here, I do a series where I test craft kits every week or so. I will link that in the description box below as well as the iCard up in the corner. Last time I had you guys vote on which kit I should do today. It was an extremely close race. I was really surprised as I was tallying all the comments one by one. Here's the crowned winner. This here is the Creative Versatool. I know I've been referring to it as Simply a wood burner but it's a lot more than that there's a hot knife there are wood stampers and there's a soldering piece I don't really know how to use any of it but I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna test it out for you all in this video so this is as beginner as it gets I have never done any of this before I'm gonna meet you guys in a few minutes I'm gonna put all this up into a bun so I don't burn it off all right, I am back, but I kind of lied. It's the next day, not a few minutes later. I ended up doing the close-up shots yesterday and then just got to onto something else. The Versatool does come with its own little plastic storage box. It's one that you could get from the craft store or I don't know if Lowe's sells them. I think they do. You could get a tackle box if you wanted any sort of little container to put this in, but it's nice that it comes with one. And there are these dividers so you can separate the attachments. Got to take the twist tie off first. And and on the table here, I do have a tile. We moved into this house and there was just a ton of stuff that the previous owners left. So I ran across this giant tile. I think that it's a good idea to have this, something like it anyway, to set the wood burner on. It also does have this little stand that you can rest it on. The first project I'm gonna show you guys is the wood stamping. So I have a very old wooden spoon. It's just a kitchen spoon that I got out of our drawer. First, I'm going to change the, ooh, okay, wait, how do I do this? <laughs> I need to read the directions. Break time again because the pizza came. Pineapple on pizza, yum. I'm going to change to a stamping point. You want to do this while the tool is cool. You don't want it to be plugged in at all. And if you have been using it, definitely wait for it to cool down and or carefully use pliers and gloves. But I would just wait for it to cool down. Like personally, I feel like I would burn myself. So I haven't plugged this in yet. I'm going to use a pair of pliers. These are jewelry pliers. We do have have some heavy duty pliers in the garage, but I think this will work. Oh, I want to turn this on and get a close up. There we go. Oh yeah, it's pretty easy to just twist the point off. So that's already loosened. That took me like 10 seconds. And now I'm going to twist the hot stamping point in. There we go. Now that it's all set up, I'm going to plug it in and the instructions say that it should take between four and five minutes for it to heat up completely. The cord to this is not very long, so I do have it plugged into an extension cord, not a big deal. It's been plugged in for about two minutes now. Right away, I could smell a very faint scent. It's nothing crazy, almost smells like a hot glue gun. I think it's just because it's brand new and I've never used it. I can hear really faint crackles as well every once in a while. The instructions do say to tape this stand down to your work surface and have it sitting in here, but I am just going to be very careful and not use this for this current project. It should remain stable without this though, because it's not round. It's actually pretty capable of staying put on its own, but this will give you extra security, I guess. We're just about to get into the fun stuff, but I wanna give you guys a warning first. I would not recommend using anything that is stained, anything with a varnish, polyurethane, even paint, because those things, when burned, can give off a very uh, pungent smell that's not safe. It's not good to breathe in. If you are going to do those things, do it at your own risk, please use ventilation proper ventilation maybe do it in a garage with the door open we just had a snowstorm so i am going to stay in the warm house and not do any of those things breathing in the fumes from burning stained wood can be very very dangerous it can make you feel ill physically and even if it doesn't it's just not good to breathe those things in so wear a respirator use proper ventilation all that good stuff by this point it should be heated so I have a couple pieces of wood as test dummies, I guess. I have a craft stick or popsicle stick and part of a clothespin. Uh, for some reason, I have a whole bag full of old clothespins and not all of them are together. I forget what craft I did with these. So I'm gonna test the stamping point on here. <gasps> Whoa! 
That's awesome. It actually smells like a campfire too. Like obviously I know burning wood is going to smell, but I wasn't expecting it to smell so good. Kind of looks like a soccer ball, this one. Oh yeah, it's smoking a little bit. Let's test it out on here too. Oh my gosh, I'm smoking a lot. <laughs> okay, I guess we're good to go on the spoon. So I'm gonna add some starry polka dots or suns to the spoon. I'm just gonna do the handle, the tip that they give to work with the hot stamping. Point is to press it on and then wiggle it around. And then they say to hold this like a pencil and have the cord behind your hand. Ooh, the longer you hold it, oh, I keep breathing this in. Oh, it smells a little worse than the popsicle stick. The longer you hold it down, the darker the burn is going to be. Oh, that one didn't work, uh-oh. Trying to line this back up is difficult. Whoa, okay. It's missing one little point. Shoot, <gasps> I saw it spark. This is hard. I really stink at this. I should have practiced more. I did so much better on this popsicle stick. We might be getting a new wooden spoon because this one looks kind of nasty and cracked no big deal here's the completed spoon handle some of them definitely look better than others and it was kind of difficult to do the stamping on the curved areas of the spoon handle which is quite a bit of areas i went into this with some false confidence because i did so well on the popsicle stick but if i would have practiced more i think this would have turned out even better Next, I'm going to test out the hot knife cutting point. I'm a little bit nervous for this one because it says it's great for foam. And I don't know how badly this is gonna smoke or smell, but it does say to use on foam pumpkins or foam core board. I have some foam board, so we're gonna try it on this first. Also, I'm going to see if it will work for a piece of laser cut wood. This is called a small laser shape. It's from Michaels, it's Art Minds brand. I'm not quite sure how thick this is, but it's about the same thickness as this frame. This is also by Art Minds and it's a laser cut frame. It doesn't necessarily say to cut wood with this point, but I'm gonna see what it can do. Oh my gosh, the tip has turned blue. It's so hot. I'm nervous. So it says the slower that you go, the better it will cut. It's working and it's not smoking. This is great. I'm not sure if it is going all the way through. Did it go all the way through? Not quite. I'm gonna have to go over those lines again. This is a lot like an X-Acto knife blade, but the difference is there's a giant cord, so it makes it a little bit difficult to maneuver. But on the plus side, it's easier to cut with the heat. Will it come out yet? Yay. There we go. I made a heart. Wow. Oh no! The camera just fell. That was not good. Are we broken? No. Now let's try this. I'm not too sure because it does take a while to hold it down to even get the cut, but let's see. Uh it's it obviously goes into it, but it's it's not gonna cut. I mean maybe after many many minutes for one little yeah no that's not good that's a fail popsicle stick nah 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 no nope let's get up close and personal with all the points that are included with this tool i'm about to test the first six on this list i'm actually going to be skipping the soldering so that's the only one i'm not going to do today but let's start with the transfer point for this you have to use a laser copy of an image it can be black and white or in color i thought that i had one saved from a while back a project that i did that i got printed somewhere but i guess it's not i don't have a laser printer so i couldn't just print something out and i didn't feel like running to kinko's or wherever to get something printed laziness sorry but it does semi work and you do want to experiment a little bit with the temperature because if it's too hot it's going to burn the paper in that case it'll kind of just stamp circles instead of spreading a uniform color. It kind of worked a little bit, but I just didn't have the right 
image, I believe. And I did try it on the foam board as well, and then the paper got stuck. Okay, now for the points. There's the universal one, which I'm trying first. This just says for all fundamental wood burning techniques, there is a way to get thick lines and dots and thin lines. So I did experiment with the variations here. And I did try it on a few different pieces of wood. I found that that kind of darker one smelled more. So I don't know if there's a stain on that or if it's just that type of wood that smells more and burns more. Next we have the flow point, which is a soft cylinder with a curved end. And this one is great for writing and shading a little bit. You can do curves and dots. I did stars and hearts. The third one is the tapered point, which is very, very thin. So you can get intricate designs and detail with this. And it does kind of cut down into the wood a little bit more than the others. So you want to be careful to apply very minimal pressure here unless you do want to get a groove into the wood that is deeper than normal. With this one you can get really tiny dots. Number four we have the calligraphy point and this one was difficult for me. I'm not great at writing with this. It might just be the wood that I'm using. I did forget to mention that on the wood it's easier to go with the grain for the most part. So if you are trying to write and your grain goes horizontally, you want to turn your wood that way, but it might just vary by the type of wood. Finally, we have the shading point, which looks like a flat leaf shape, and you can actually make a leaf stamp with this one by just pressing it down, but you can also do really nice, really light colored shading and get a variation of different tones of brown. Now that I've tested all the burning tips, it's time to combine a few of them into one finished piece. I finished my very first wood burning piece and I'm pretty happy with it. So here I have a round wood plaque by Art Minds. Everything's by Art Minds, probably because I got everything from Michaels for the most part, not sponsored whatsoever. But yeah, that's just what I happen to have in my collection. So I drew the outline of a bow with pencil and you can see me going over it very slowly. I may be speeding this up in editing, but just keep in mind, you have to go very slow over the lines to get a nice uniform burn and to get a dark colored burn. The shorter the amount you leave the wood burning point on the wood, the lighter it should be in theory, but you also kind of want to adjust the temperature because if you do turn the temperature lower, it is going to create a more medium to light brown color. And then some points are going to be better for outlining than others. And of course, there is the shading point, or if you have a larger set, which I did discover exist, there's sets with hundreds of points or dozens of points anyway. Um, so I have one shading point and it did a really, really good job at getting lighter areas inside the bow outlines. So I was pretty happy with that shading tip until I shaded a bit too dark. If you do mess up on something, it's not the end of the world. It's not set in stone. It's just wood, so it can be sanded away with some normal sandpaper. But for burns that are really dark, which would in turn make them a little bit deeper, you would want to use a Dremel potentially, which is a pretty nifty tool. This is an old one. I can't find the year, but it still works like a champ. Because there are different size tips, you can get a lot of detail and it does go further down easier. The Dremel did most of the work for me, so it was great. I burnt my initials in to sign my work. The finishing touch I added to this piece was acrylic paint. So I have just really cheap brands, again from Michaels. They are craft smart, there's a loud car outside. I used a couple of these paint brushes, nothing fancy, and I just carefully painted white around the entire border. I let that dry and then I put another coat, one of brown or like a tannish color around the 
most outer part and then more white just in that middle area to make sure it was completely opaque and none of the wood was showing through. If you guys enjoyed this video, please come back and watch more. I post every single Friday. If you turn bell notifications on, you'll be notified every time I post a new video. I also do have art series as well, like drawing. If you guys are interested, check out my Wreck This Journal and Create This Book episodes. In the future, I want to be able to hang this on the wall easily. I don't want to use that command tape or whatever it is, the double-sided tape. That stuff is a mess to get off. It may or may not have ripped a lot of paint off the wall in the apartment that I previously lived at. So I want to add some sort of hook or whatever type of hardware that we happen to have or I happen to find that will be a good fit the easiest way to hang this, whatever that may be. I actually really enjoyed this and hopefully I'll be making more and doing my very first art show this spring or summer. Well, in the summer, but I have to apply in the spring. So I gotta get a lot of stuff made. Otherwise, if I don't make that deadline, then I'll just sell stuff on Etsy or open a shop at some point. I'm gonna do that this year, 2019 market. That's one of my goals. The next craft kit I'll be testing is the Crayola Beetle Bead Maker. And then we'll do even more cool stuff after that that I am keeping a secret from you guys. Thank you for watching, bye.